you ever needed evidence that I am indeed a pretentious twat, then I think this video will be the tipping point and the moment of realisation for a lot of people because uh, I'm doubling up my scarf as a poncho for the sake of this review because it's, uh, it's quite a fancy beer, ladies and gentlemen. And today we're going over to Holland and we're looking at Grolsch. So it's a premium lager. Uh, da, 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 Royal Grolsch Holland Craftsmanship and Artistry. Uh, apparently limited edition artwork on these cans. 440ml. Uh, actually really like that artwork. It's actually really, really nice. I know um, Carlsberg have had a rebrand as well. I actually quite like that. And uh, I don't think I've reviewed Carlsberg for the channel. Or Carlsberg Export, that is. But they've got Mads Mikkelsen as the like spokesman for, for them. Which is... Uh, I fucking love Mads Mikkelsen. He's one of my favourite actors. So I'm um, going to have to pick up a, a bottle or a can of Carlsberg Export in the near future but uh, yeah pick this up well let's pick up a four pack because um, by the time you're seeing this I will have done a uh, a live review with my good friends over in Canada as part of the beer analysis 101 series so uh, if I do indeed actually take part if I don't fall asleep because you know it's like six hours ahead of us then um, is it six hours I think it's a little bit much but um, yeah I'll put the link down below anyway, but I think I'll be there. So I uh, couldn't find any singles anywhere. Story of my life. But uh, yeah, I had to pick up a four pack for £5.50 from uh, one of the local sort of um, corner shops. Because um, I know Bargain Boos had them for £4.50, if I remember correctly, but unfortunately didn't have any. So for that extra quid, picked up a four pack. I've got one to review for the channel, I've got one for the analysis. And then uh, just a couple casual beers to sink back. Because I actually remember quite enjoying Grolsch. And uh, you don't really see them in the uh, the flip top bottles as much. Which is a real shame because I really like that style of bottle. But um, yeah, anyway, let's go can it. So obviously I think they're trying to cash in on the, you know, the, the craft craze with this. Or you know, just do something a little bit different. Try and, uh, you know, get people interest in their beer and uh, you know what fair play to them they actually credit the artist on the can and give a little bit of a blurb into the limited edition packaging so the art of doodleism i do enjoy a good doodle this isn't a limited edition can this can is a limited edition work of art designed by danny sangra for our doodle bombing event what else would you expect from a lager that's always been unconventional by tradition Unconventional by tradition? I don't know. Uh, Do you know what? I'm actually going to look that up because I'm really quite interested. And of course, I'm going to put the link down below to um, Danny Sangra's uh, Flickr or Instagram or wherever he puts his artwork. Because I actually really, really do genuinely like that. That's the sort of designs I like. You know, hand-drawn, rough around the edges, just bombard the image with little tiny images within an image uh, it's a great way if you're not very good at drawing to actually have a nice piece of art when you uh, put loads of tiny little illustrations together uh, life hack from a graphic designer who left his university after he failed his second year yeah never take any advice in any way shape or form from me because i think you can clearly see why but uh yeah so five percent abv in the 500 mil can um, I'm sure the ones from Bargain Booze that I was looking to get were 440s. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy to have the uh, extra uh, 60 mil. So, without further ado, let's get this one opened and see what we get. Nice little uh, canned cream pie action on the rim. <laughs> Gotta stop making cream pie jokes. Absolutely disgusting. There's children watching these videos, for God's sake. And uh, yeah, that's pretty active in the glass. Of course, using the correct glassware, that is a teku glass. Yeah, I'm trying to make this video as pretentious as physically possible, which isn't saying much because, yeah, anyway. So, massive head on this one. 
three fingers worth of a brilliant white head, loads of tiny compact bubbles in there. And then when you actually see what uh, remnants of beer there is in the glass, it's a lovely sort of deep golden colour, crystal clear, nice amounts of bubbles. That head is actually quite reinforced, it's not dying down too quick. But uh, yeah, it's you know pitch perfect for the style. Uh, not too sure if Grolsch is an adjunct to lager. Um, the only thing about this can is the actual vital information is like slightly lifted grey text on a white background on a shiny can, so it's a little bit hard to read. But uh, yeah, I can't really see too much about the ingredients. There we go. Uh, ingredients are water, malted barley, and hops. That's all it says, really, so I'm not too sure if it is an adjunct or not. Whether the legally allowed to not say that information i don't know but uh yeah looks good let's see what we can get on the aroma it's got that bready biscuitiness you get that you expect i'm pretty sure this head is you know masking uh some aromas but yeah it's got that slight very gentle syrupiness to it, not too dark. Slight sort of um, metally aroma, but you know, I've had this many times before with these uh, macro lagers in cans. That flavour or the aroma seems to uh, die off quite quickly. But um, yeah, it's it's a simple simple smelling lager. Nothing's really out of the glass. So there's no offensiveness there, but at the same time, it's not really the most exciting beer, but would you really expect that? Yeah, not too bad, a little bit of muskiness in there as well. Anyway, let's give it a taste. Cheers. Yeah, it's fairly nondescript. Um, which I suppose is a good thing for a lager because it means you'll just want to drink more and more and more of it. Uh, not much I can say really about this one, guys. Um, it's just a, a classic Euro lager. Uh, it doesn't taste too synthetic. There's real quality with it. Slight corn flavour in there. Lovely sort of biscuity Jacob's Cracker malt character coming through. Herbally as well, little salad leaves also. It's got that ever so slight metallic hop character on the back end. Surprisingly bitter on the back end as well. But there's like this very subtle, very, very subtle slight citrusy flavour. It reminds me of the, the lemon juice you get when you go to like a chip shop or you've done yourself a nice schnitzel. You pour a little bit of the lemon juice from the little squeezy bottles onto the, the breaded meat, fish, whatever. So it's not like really zesty sort of lemon character, but it's got that lemonness, if that's a proper word. Yeah, that, that's really not too bad. Um, sessionable, easy drinking, <laughs> a little bit boring, inoffensive. You couldn't really ask for more for a beer like this. Um, yeah, I, I remember drinking this quite a lot when I was getting into craft beer and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I think I would happily pick this up again. Although the price point, um, I know you can get comparative beers for a little bit cheaper. And that's the great thing about the... Okay, got possessed then for a second. Uh, that's the great thing about me doing these beer reviews is I'm getting to revisit these beers which I've actually not drank since long before I started doing beer reviews so it's it's a nice journey and I've got to say a lot of these macro lagers that I've been revisiting from my teenage years have been really quite good um, you know they're not world class they're not mind blowing but would you really expect that and do you really want that with these beers these are ones where you can't really be bothered getting like a craft IPA or Imperial Stout or whatever. You go into like a mate's house or it's curry night or whatever, and you just want to just want just want to kick back with some beer. And for a big macro company, really, really good. I I really, really quite like this.
but I'm I'm still the sort of person who would happily pay like the like two pound fifty for a four pack of Bud Light. It's it's good enough for me. Do you know what I mean? But I would not be grudged buying this again, and I'm looking forward to revisiting this in a few hours with uh, some other people. Get some thoughts and ideas about this beer. So yeah, in terms of a rating, I'm gonna give Grolsch a seven out of ten. I'm a bit flew out of the can then. How the hell did I manage that? Yeah, not bad at all, guys. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts, opinions on this beer, or some of your favourite beers from Holland. Um, some of your favourite macro lagers. You know, your big boys. Give me all your your comments down below. And uh, yeah, if you've got any thoughts, opinions, always welcome. Suggestions, always welcome. As always, if any friends and fellow beer tubers have reviewed this beer, their links will be included. Check out Rolsch. Check out um, Danny Sangra as well. See more of his artwork. Check out my macro lager playlist and uh, whatever other playlist I decide to put in the description box. So uh, you'll have to excuse me now. I've been inspired by the artwork. I'm just going to paint some canvases black and then cry a little bit and video it all and uh, submit it to the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Thank you guys for watching and I've been a very pretentious twat in this video. <laughs>